Hi, Edward. Really nice to meet you. How are you? Good, Laura Donna. Very good. How are you? I'm fine. So thanks for uh, talking to uh, me today and we're sharing how was your experience with the B2B Prospecting Academy. But before that, I'd like uh, you to take maybe a few minutes to talk about yourself and your business, if possible. Sure. Um, well, I, uh, I live in the UK now. I'm in Earl's Court. But originally, as you can probably tell from my accent, I'm from the States. Uh, originally from a small town in Maine, um, moved my way down to Manhattan and then Miami. Um, and about 10 years ago, actually 11 years ago, founded Noon Dalton with my business partner, Jahan Noon. Um, we have offices in India, the Philippines, now London, New York, uh, Miami and Denver. Uh, and uh, I realized a couple years ago that there was a tremendous amount of opportunity in Europe. And I feel, feel like Europe is more like home now than, uh, than New York or Miami, which is a little ironic seeing as I spent so much time there. Uh, but the, the company, we predominantly work with companies that either currently or are looking to create or, or manage remote teams. So, you know, the traditional sense of outsourcing, but kind of turned on its head a little bit. So oftentimes in the past, people look at outsourcing as just being, uh, I'm gonna go hire people in India or the Philippines. But now we look at other regions and other opportunities as well. So we'll develop a program for a client or replicate an existing program where they have administrative activities that could be done in India or customer care activities that would meet, need people on the phone, which we would put them in the Philippines. Um, so again, it's either fast growth companies that are looking us looking to us to help design and evaluate programs and then launch them for them or working with companies that have existing outsourcing teams that are either looking to expand or potentially relocate their teams to us. Okay, great, thanks. Um, so um, I'd like to ask you, how come you've registered for the B2B Prospecting Academy? Um, so we, my business partner and I have been very involved in entrepreneurs organization for about eight years. We started as a sponsor I became a member several years ago, and then I joined the um, I joined the board here in London. And we'd always done our marketing kind of ourselves, and we and we did it as a bit of an ad hoc, you know, here and there. We try things. Someone would come in and say, "Hey, you should test this. You should try that." We'd bring someone on for SEO or for AdWords, and it and it was piecemeal together in a way that was very challenging for me as the owner of the business and the head of the marketing department to be running. So we, um, well, we made a bit of a pivot last year and with that, the B2B was perfect timing for us to look at Noon Dalton as a whole, look at look at all of our marketing collateral and, and be with a group of other entrepreneurs and, and understand what other groups are doing at the same time. And then with Laura Donna and the B2B network, we were able to go through and and not just look at you know item by item by item, but then really evaluate which ones made sense for us. Um, so it uh, it was really nice because it was brought to my attention, and I felt once a week meeting with the same group of people for a period of time would give us the ability, us internally of Noon Dalton would give us the ability to be able to look at the different opportunities that are out there, evaluate which ones make the most amount of sense for us, and then give us the time frame to implement them with accountability. So the accountability being that we have to report to school next week and and, uh, and do our do our homework in between. Okay, thanks for sharing that. I was actually very humbled how such uh, experienced people attended the program and they still got uh, good value out of it. So I'm happy that you had this opportunity to basically work on your overall strategy for, for prospecting and for going after customers and so on. And um, what were some of the challenges that maybe uh, you overcame by just attending the program? So I think the challenges were more, the challenges would be more on my side than they would be on the B2B network. It, it's, 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 it's challenging as an entrepreneur wearing many hats. You know, the phone rings and it's someone that's upset because a sale didn't go through 
or someone else that's upset because their commission wasn't as big as they expected it or a client misunderstood something that a staff did. And those are the fires that we have to put out on a day-to-day -day basis. And at the end of the day, at six or seven o'clock, it's, it's, it's challenging to put the marketing hat on and go in and, and do a LinkedIn campaign or to think about the one thing that you're best at as, a, as an entrepreneur in an organization. So I think the challenges fall more on, on myself. Um, an opportunity that came off the back of it, which I was really pleased we were able to move forward with, is we were able to bring my team together and actually launch a program with your organization that is specific for us. So I believed in the process enough to actually bring it internal and replicate it. So I think the challenges again are, as an entrepreneur, having a lot going on, sometimes it's challenging to set aside the time necessary to be able to focus on the homework and make sure that you've actually learned all the steps in the process so you can bring it back to your team. Or if you're doing it for yourself, it's a great way to have that required time where you, uh, where you accomplish the objectives of the course. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks for sharing that. Yeah, it is a process, right? So this is one of the things that I uh, am trying to, uh, you know, embed into the, the, the way we are working with prospecting that it is a process. It's not an event and it has to be um, a daily process that, that uh, we follow. Um, you mentioned a few times the network, like the B2B network. How was the structure of the group that you joined? How did you relate to the peers in the group? Um, yeah, that, that's uh, interesting. So when I first joined, uh, some of the people were kind of in the marketing department or in the sales department of organizations and other people were owners. Some people were part of entrepreneurs organization and some people weren't. Um, I think towards the end, the blend was actually quite nice because people were coming at the situation from different levels. And as an owner of a company, I got to actually think about the way that maybe someone that was in this, you know, on the sales team or someone on my marketing team might be approaching a problem or looking at a situation. Um, so I think that that blend was quite nice. Had it all been entrepreneurs, um, probably would have been good as well. But I think that the, the mix was really was really nice. Um, it, it also allowed for some knowledge to be shared uh, up channel from people in a junior position to us as far as the way that we think about things. And then also our experience, we could share it with the rest of the team, the people that own companies versus who are employed by companies. Okay, great. Thanks for sharing that. Um, how, how about the results? Since you mentioned you did this, any clear results like uh, talking about accountability, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, so through, through the course, uh, there was two clients that look like they'll be closing uh, in transparency based on what we're dealing with globally with the pandemic. Businesses are taking a longer time to be able to make decisions than they have in the past. But I can directly correlate two strong, I would say 95% probability that they will close, uh, which is more than, more than I would have expected when, while walking into it. I, I honestly thought going into it that I was just going to be Kind of given a bit of a handbook on how to do this walk through the process and that the uh, the follow along that i probably would have never gotten a question like this if you asked me when we started the process another thing that i wanted to point out which was sort of a um, given for you but not so easy for anybody else is uh, how much value you provide to your customers can you maybe talk a bit about uh, you know the the whole value concept and the service excellence i found it really unique how your business does that you know sort of um i don't know if accidentally but definitely intentional right um and why i'd like you to take this time to present this is that during this program uh, I, I facilitate, I see myself as a facilitator rather than a teacher or something. And one thing that I got out of it is a lot of value by your experience shares, right? So mm -hmm. I learned together with the group. So can you elaborate a bit about how you add value to your um, customers and particularly in the service excellence, which I found it really unique with your business? Yeah. So. I think one of the challenges is that a lot of people look at outsourcing or remote teams or call centers and it has a negative connotation. Um, for us, it's as important to make sure that our internal clients, which is the people that work for Noon Dalton, are happy and they have growth and they have learning. Uh, personal development is very important. We've developed an internal university for our staff so that 
at the end of the tenure that they're with us, they're, they're leaving us a better educated staff than when they arrived. And, and that's really important for us. What ends up ultimately happening is it takes time to build trust with a client. And once the client starts looking at us as their, their outsourcing or remote team partner, and they look at us as part of their organization as a separate entity, but we care as much about their work as they would themselves, that's when they see that excellence of our staff shining through. We have several clients in the US and, and also in Europe um, that come in with a small project and then we'll work with each of their department heads and say, listen, what are the things that are challenging? What, what positions do you have a high turnover in your current, you know, your current structure? You know, is there positions that you've hired multiple times for the same person over the course of the last year or two? How much time does that take from your HR team? How much time, you know, how many times during your quarterly meetings do you have to have these conversations around junior people that you need to rehire? You know, looking at a provider like us, yes, we're an extension of your team. Yes, we're more economical, but the work gets done without the stress of your internal team. So the, the key element being that you can focus on the most important things locally and allow us to focus on the things that are equally as important but not necessarily revenue driving activities. So, you know, administrative back office support or customer care or chat support, but there's hundreds of different things. Um, we have we have several clients again, like I said, in the States and, and now in Europe as well, that we've gone on with a small team. And, and before you know it, we've got 20, 30, 40 staff that are working with them. And I think we did an analysis of two of our clients recently in the US, one in New York and, and one in Florida. And we're talking 400, 500,000 in savings when you look at all the expenses that goes into having an office, you know, the, the, the lights, the utilities, the computer, the phone, you know, the time off, the, the benefits, et cetera. Not to say that people shouldn't hire local staff. I'm encouraging that as well. It's just this creates a more productive workforce that hits your PL in a different way. So, um, Again, as I said in the beginning, unfortunately, there's a lot of companies out there that don't have as much care and don't think about things from a client's point of view. All they care about is, you know, bringing on a bunch of staff and, and, and you know, getting the business. Uh, but the business doesn't stay if you don't take care of the clients. And that's that's what our focus is, our internal and external clients. Um, thanks for sharing this. And uh, I, I really sort of uh, see uh, how this lives basically for your organization so many people would would say things like that but i can feel that this lives through the organization there's definitely sort of a mirror effect between the way uh, you treat uh, the the people in your team and the way uh, the, the customers get treated. And I've seen this through many service business times and times again. So it's amazing to see how preoccupied you are you are about the well-being of your, your staff and how this reflects into the quality of the service. Um, so thanks again for sharing uh, all the information you've generally uh, share, uh, generously shared today. Uh, I really appreciate your time and I look forward to hearing about uh, your amazing success and I hope that you know you'll achieve your all your goals for the year and the years to come. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add uh, at the in the end? <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and this isn't anything specific with, with you or your organization. It's just a, an, an experience share that I've realized recently is that it feels like there's two types of business owner out there. The ones that look at things like this as an expense or the ones that look at things like this as an investment. Uh, there's learning elements to it. Uh, you know, the, the, the uh, an interesting segue is we were in one of our calls and the person on your team was saying something and I'm like, well, don't you guys provide that as a service? Like, why wouldn't you tell us you could do that for us? So I didn't feel like I was ever being sold to, uh, but if you look at these types of opportunities as a way to develop your skills and it's an investment in your growth and in your learning and your knowledge, then I think that you'll see a tremendous amount of benefit from it. If you just look at it as an expense on your bottom line, then um, it might not be the right fit for you uh, because you need to be invested and you need to want to learn these skills for them to be applicable. Great. Thanks for sharing. Really appreciate your time. And uh, let's hope we will revisit some of these topics in our conversations. <laughs> Agreed. Well, thank you very much for your time.